Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today I'm going to do another cooler analysis video. So I'm going to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So let's have a look which cooler I'm going to add. The cooler I'm going to add is a Thermaltake UX200. It looks a pretty decent cooler. Um, saw it again in Micro Center like I do with a lot of the coolers that I've put in the league so far. Um, it's got a, looks like it's got a pretty decent amount of RGB. Looks a pretty decent cooler. But to help analyze this cooler, I did mention in my last cooler video that I was thinking of changing the scoring system a little bit. And I have done, and when we actually get to analyzing the scores, I'll actually go through how I've um, changed the scoring. But for now, let's have a quick look at the install. Like the Contact 12, it has four bayonets which go into a mount. They have edges which line up to little slits in those points, there are three slits for the three different sides of Intel CPUs. You simply push them in, lining the um, edges up to the slots, and push it in, and you hear an audible click, and you can see it in. You repeat that four times. You've also got pins, which will then go in. Don't forget to pull away the uh, cellophane that's um, protecting the heat pipes. You can see there are four heat pipes with this cooler. This is the new fan that they've done with this cooler, which has um, a four pin controller from the motherboard and also controller from the motherboard for doing your RGB if you want to use the software. It has RGB on the front, but it also has RGB on the top of the fan. The fan is mounted with pins and the cooler itself is attached to the ring via two clips on either side. When I'm installing it, I'm making sure that the bayonets are fully pushed through Okay, but what I'm going to do for this particular, in the particular case, you can see I've only put two of the pins in. The reason I'm going to do that is you've got to basically look to see which way the cooler will go in without hitting memory or hitting any heat sinks. What I've done, you can see I've attached one side of the clips onto the ring. And what I'm going to do then is, and this found this is the easiest way of doing it, is that once I've got that, then I'm going to push the other two pins in on the other side basically making it easier to get the cooler inside on the motherboard because the space was quite tight next to the motherboard cooling. So as you can see, there's what, that pin going in and the last pin going in. Because what I did that before I put the pins in, I was always pushing the bayonets through the motherboard and the pins are holding them in place. Once I did that, then I had to very firmly clip on the other side. There we go, checking it's nicely in place. Then putting the fan on. Now what I've found the easiest way with this, you've got to slide it across the memory, is trying to attach one side first. I found if I tried to attach both pins um, to the side, it was hard to handle. So what I'm doing is putting the fan in place, getting the one clip on one side in, and then holding the fan and then using the clip on the other side to attach it to the cooler. Voila, there you go. Now for your RGB, there's a manual that tells you how to connect it. And you make sure you find your header, and you attach your RGB cable to your header so you can control the RGB. So install-wise, it wasn't the most difficult to install. It wasn't the easiest either. It, to be fair, um, install-wise, it pretty much installed exactly the same as the uh, Thermaltake Contact 12, which is not a surprise because it's a cooler from the same brand. Um, so now we've had a look at the install and I don't know what you think of it. Please leave uh, your comments down below about what you thought of the install. But now let's have a look at the scores. So base temp wise, the UX200 didn't do too well in this category. Although I think that was because the fan didn't start off too well. It was kind of quiet. Um, and I think it's doing that to do noise reduction. So no surprise. As you can see from the base sound, it's actually quite low. So again, I think that's related to what I just said about the base temperature. The Cinebench score average it's not the best, but it's not the worst either. A uh, little bit disappointed with this, but you know it is what it is. The max average temp wasn't actually that bad. It only just crept over 80, but still not that great compared to other coolers like the, especially the Hyper 212, which is the same price. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. Max sound, it wasn't too loud, really. It actually sounded pretty well. It, I didn't hear much noise out of it, so it's no surprise it actually finished quite well in this category compared to other coolers. Scoring ranges. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, I was thinking of changing the scoring ranges. And as you can see, I've expanded the ranges, basically to be able to score a more wider range of values to give better results for each time I do a video. So we're not getting so many coolers piling up with the same score. Okay. 
So here's how the league table looks now that we've gone through all of the data and you can see that the Thermaltake UX200 ARGB, don't forget the ARGB, is coming in with 24 points, which is a little bit disappointing. It's very thereabouts with the um, Thermal Take Contact 12, which is a very similar cooler, if not the same cooler, and I'll get to that in conclusion. Um, but it's really falling behind, say, the Cooler Master to Hyper 212 RGB, because that cooler is the same price, so it's very disappointing. So there we are, we've gone through the scores. As you can probably tell, it's not the best cooler in the world. And before the install and during the scores, I heavily compared it to this, which is the Contact 12. Now, the reason I've done that is because pretty much it looked like exactly the same cooler. The cooler itself, like exactly the same number as heat pipes as the Contact 12. Also, the main body was the same. The only difference was that when the Contact 12 was silver, that was black. The big chief difference between the two coolers is the fan. Because the fan operates at a quieter um, noise levels, but it performs about the same, but you get the RGB. Now here's the big kicker for me, and I don't know what you think, but personally, I'm not a big fan of this. This is this cooler is $20 more expensive, and all you're really getting for that is slightly more silent operation, and you're getting RGB. So pretty much what you're doing is paying RG, for the RGB and slightly silent, more silent operation, for the, basically the same performance. The temperatures, everything along those lines, performance-wise, the scores were pretty much in line with the Contact uh, 12. And you'll notice in the league table, it's below the Contact 12. And that's for a good reason, because of that, that, that difference in expense. It puts in a different price bracket, so therefore the points are different. So for me, this cooler, if you want your RGB, you want it to look good, and you don't mind paying that extra $20, you know, you, yeah, okay, go for it. If you're not that forced, buy the Contact 12 instead. If you're willing to pay the 20 extra dollars for the uh, UX200, I'd just spend that little bit more and go for an Octua or Be Quiet Cooler instead because they both look really attractive. Okay, they've not got RGB, but the performance and the noise out of the things, it's just... It's just worth paying a little extra more. For this, paying the $20 for more, uh, more than, the, say, the Contact 12, I'm sorry to say it's just not for me. So sorry to jump in, but I realized as I was in the video that I didn't mention in my conclusion that the Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB would be a perfect option um, for the UX200. It's the same price, it includes RGB, it's black, and the performance is far better. So keep that in mind. Back to my conclusion. All right, I hope you found that video useful. Please don't forget to leave comments down below if you found it useful. Below. Also, if you found it useful, please toss a like in it. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And if you do so, don't forget to hit the bell icon for, as you'll be let know of future content. And as always, take care.